Yes, welcome to the Spectrum of Health podcast. My name's Jav, and today, guys, we've got another special guest, one of my best friends, known him for nearly 20 years, former teammate of mine, over 150 professional appearances, couple Premier League appearances in there, FA Cup appearances in there, Mr. Hiram Botang. Boom. Firstly, all right, all right thank you for um, joining me. Obviously, I told you I wanted to get you involved for a little while now. So yeah, I'm glad we could finally get it over the line. Um, so, yeah, firstly, how are you, man? How are things? I'm good, bro, man. Literally, I'm good. You know, I've been waiting to do this, but... Yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. Um, how are you finding kind of the off-season, the pre-pre-season type of time right now? You know, it's been it's been all right. It's been all right. It's been a little bit different because normally there's like a group of people that you work with, like, yeah. you know, like in terms of the running. Gym, okay, yeah, like, like before you even go it was, back. It was always like Reese, Tariq, and stuff yeah. like that. And obviously Reese being elsewhere. Yeah. And, and obviously Tariq. Tariq. Able to play, yeah. So, so yeah, it's been a little bit different. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I've been working with Crowley uh, and Matt and just pushing really, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you think that before we even get into what we're going to talk about? But do you think that, like, because of the time off with COVID, you don't need to worry about kind of overdoing it or getting burnout? Because I was thinking, like, we had we had not we, but a lot of the footballers had a lot of time off last year when the when the pandemic first hit. Yeah. So, like, do you worry about kind of overdoing it at all? Or you not really? You don't really care. You're good. You feel good. No, you know what? I I don't think. I don't think I really worry about that, but at the same time, where I've had where we had that time off with COVID, um, coming in and shaking everything up, I think you realise that your body can actually handle like a bit of a break as well. Yeah. And then you can all, all almost like know, all right, I know how to train myself to get my body right again for yeah. the season. Yeah. Because I feel like so many players came back. People dropped so much weight off them. Yeah. People were fitter than ever. Yeah. And were kind of like just able to regiment themselves as well. Yeah. So I think that's what I've learned, like, about my own body person. Mm. Mm. Cool, man. All right. So, boom. I got a bunch of questions for you. Talk about your career. Not just your career, though, because for me, I kind of want to talk a little bit about, like, your mind state and how you were thinking at certain points as well. Yeah. Um. Obviously, childhood, all that kind of stuff. So... First question, really, that I kind of want to know is like, what, what got you into football as a kid? Like, um, it was just a football crazy household. Mm. So you know, I got three brothers as well, and from early, like, that's just all we was doing, really, just playing football outside in the estate. And then I think I was about six years old when there was like there was a a sports center downstairs from my house called Bats Youth Center. I used to go down there, kick ball, and there was like maybe under nines or whatever, or under eight training. And there was one guy that was like to me, oh, um, just go and join him with a session, innit? Like one of the, he's like a scout or something mm. called Sonny. Every end's got a scout. Every, every end's got that scout, <laughs> like one scout. They always got a cap on. Yeah, yeah. Know everyone. So he was like, oh, yeah, just jump in the session. So I'm playing with like a couple of the older boys and whatever, done well. And then that was my like gateway into playing. And yeah. Like, Playing in a team and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, cool. So obviously we met when we were eight or nine. Eight or nine, yeah. You was yeah. at Palace already. I was on trial. Mm -hmm. How did you get into Palace as a kid? What was the route from playing in Battersea to getting into Palace? Uh there was a coach who was the under nines coach, but he coached at my Sunday League team as well. So he took a few of us for the trials and stuff like that. Yeah. And obviously some people got signed, some people didn't get signed, but yeah. you remember Baggio? Yeah, I remember so Baggio. He, yeah, yeah. he was at my Sunday league team as well, innit? So okay. we like our dad used to take turns taking us to football and whatever, just alternate. And then yeah, us two got signed. So under nines or eights. Yeah. Or yeah. And yeah, that was kind of how we got in. Okay. So okay. shout out that guy. Yeah. Luke Sainsbury. Do, do you even do you remember? Yeah, him? I remember, I remember, but I haven't seen him since probably like 10 years old, 11 years old. Wow, okay. So he just, he's the one that plugged you and yeah, he just... Yeah, he's getting up, man. He's getting <laughs> But you know what, that happens though, because I'm trying to think back when I got scouted, I was playing for Sydney Sports and it was a cup final mm -hmm. and a guy named Barry Dunn just handed my brother a card yeah. and said, come training. 
Mm. And that was it. I never heard from him. Never seen this guy. I don't. I didn't even see him. I didn't meet him. <laughs> My brother was the one that got given the card. I've never met this guy. I don't know anyone called Barry Dunn in football right now. So you can't even fact no one. I don't know. Yeah. I ain't got a clue. So yeah, that's mad. Um, so like, obviously, you get into Palace at eight mm. or nine years old, which is a, which is a big deal. When did you kind of realize though? Maybe at eight or nine, you don't realize how good you are. You're kind of just doing it for fun. You might play with the older boys in their state and all that kind of stuff. But like, at what age did you kind of realize, you know, I'm actually good at this. I might be able to make it. Like, was it when you were a teenager? Did you know even back then? I think, I think it was always for fun. But I think in like the people I was around, there was always like a culture of if someone was younger and they could handle it, they could play with the older players. Mm. And I was able to do that like when I was younger. So I always thought, okay, I might be decent at this. But I guess the dream always was just from young, like, can I play on TV? Yeah. Can I play on like nice pitches? Yeah. Like, you know, used to just used to just playing matches on rubbish, innit? Yeah. I'm sure you know as well, yeah. innit? But um yeah. that was it really. And I think I always was quietly confident in my ability, um, because I was able to handle playing with like rougher people, older people and stuff yeah. like that. So to put age on it is hard, but like just growing up, like I, I felt like I did have have like something or a little bit of something special yeah. that maybe maybe other people might not have had in yeah. it. But yeah. Cool. And so like a big thing with all the guests I've spoken to so far, they we always talk about having like a supportive environment like for me it was probably my brother um other people's would always say some sort of family member i know your dad's quite heavily involved so like growing up like who was your main support system obviously you got two old, two older brothers in it or three yeah, older yeah. brothers two, so, older brothers. two older brothers so you got some people around you like who would you say especially in your younger days were like some of your main support systems um yeah like my whole family really obviously my dad was heavily involved from early yeah and like every every game he's there take me training everywhere in it yeah um and then my mum that's like a turning point like when i hit like 13 she, she just i don't know where her football education came from <laughs> yo i'm telling you mumsy she knows everything about yeah football now. yeah she got her own team sports mother world and that um <laughs> it's my girl, honestly i don't know where it came from but she just turned into like like a football mum at a point. Um, so yeah, I'm always grateful to kind of what they've done for me and supporting me, taking me to training, yeah. evenings after work and yeah. whatever. Um, and then my brothers have always just been there to kind of give me a different perspective. Like, you know, sometimes your dad might be too hard on you. Yeah, yeah. Your brothers are like, okay, I'm going to analyse it a little bit, but be a bit fairer with you. Yeah. So it was good, man. I had a good balance yeah. um, from everyone in my household. Yeah. Did you ever feel like your dad was too on your case? Because you know, sometimes in football, you know, you get them dads, your dad might not be like that, but you know, you get them dads sometimes where they're like overbearing to a point. Like, do you know what? I can't you... lie. I've... My mom said it to me the other day. She said that when my dad would be shouting onto the pitch, I just used to like do that. Like, I used to, <laughs> I used to, I used to be like, nah, like, just loud, like, man, or be quiet. Or something. Yeah, but yeah. Obviously, you know me, I'm not a rude person, is it? Yeah, but I feel like if you're making a scene, like I get a bit like yeah, you just wanna, in yeah, it. you just want to concentrate. Um, and I feel like when I was younger, to be honest, I feel like I was doing well enough that he didn't really get onto me too much. Mm. It's probably been more as I've got older. Yeah. there's a bit more of locking horns and getting into a bit of discrepancies over yeah. over certain yeah. certain issues with football. But over time, you, you kind of even if you weren't listening as much, yeah, you come to appreciate that in it, like. Yeah, hundred percent. As, as an adult now, hundred well. percent. Because you know they're doing it like that. They're, they're going to be the people that have your actual best interest at heart. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's, true. it's never out of it's never out of anything. Like, yeah. it's, it's love in it. That's true. Cool, man. So, um, like, obviously, in academy year after year, until you're like maybe thirteen or fourteen, and you get offered that early scholarship, you mm -hmm. kind of waiting on getting another um another contract or whatever. But in your youth team kind of career, leading up to even when you was 18, so about to start your first pro or whatever, were there any kind of 
like what would you say was your first major setback like were there any major setbacks because mm. obviously I know you know you had a pretty much not a clean run no one's no one has it easy but you know you got your scholarship early you got your pro like you you managed to get some appearances but even before kind of getting your first ever appearance what would you say was like one first major kind of setback could be something like maybe Dougie Friedman leaving or something like that um I think I'd probably say up until about 17 was fairly plain sailing but then when I got to 17 I went on loan I know this is not at Palace but like when I went on loan to Crawley madness because I've gone there I've signed on loan the clubs I think I've made an appearance already for Palace Um, I had no agent club said I Crawley want you just gone there played 45 minutes of football in like two months so I was just like I'm thinking what am I doing here? Yeah. In my mind, didn't yeah. it? I've gone with Sade as well. Yeah, like, yeah. What am, I doing? what am I doing here? Like, I've come here. I feel like I'm better than, like, players. I feel like I'm training well. And it's like I'm a backup. I'm a plan B. But I've I've not really been that, like, bit from being young up until 16, 17. Yeah. And it gave me, like, a taste of reality. Like, it's different. Yeah. If they feel like you're not strong enough physically or you're not smart enough to handle it, they're not going to play you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was probably the first, like, uh, real, like, uh, bump in the road that I felt was seeing my career. And up until then, it was probably so okay. So how long was Jack Crawley for? I did. So I signed a month, and somehow they wrote me into signing another month. <laughs> Bro, honestly, I don't so know how, what I Yeah, doing. how did it get to become extended if you only played 45 minutes? I hadn't even played. In the, I hadn't played any minutes. So in the first, first month, month, you didn't play? Nothing. So you're training every oh, day? Training every day. I think I came up to Palace for like two days and they were like, oh yeah, like, extend it. Like, you're going to play. Well, I've gone there. Another month. Played 45 minutes against Steven. He's dragged at halftime. I was getting, oh my God, I was getting dashed about everywhere. Okay. And these times the pitch was mad sandy, innit? They like, they hadn't laid it properly or something right. like that. So like, I've come up the pitch, I've got sand in my hair. I'm stressed. Dragged me. And then um, they tried to get me to sign another month. I said, nah, I can't he do it. He said, no. This time. <laughs> so, all right. So some people, yeah, I feel like you go on a loan like that. Some guys, it like makes or breaks them, innit? So when you come back from the loan, what was you thinking? Like your confidence levels, like how was you feeling in that regard? I can't lie. I felt good because I've been around like, so you know, like the change room at Palace was kind of mad, innit? Mm. But I've been around like, different people and I'm out of my comfort zone a little bit and I'm learning how to be around other players like you learn that you need to keep yourself to yourself at times and not tell every they're not all your boys they're not all your friends yeah like even bits of banter like my first no not my first day probably like my first week there come in the changing room and I've gone gone to my spot like my where my clothes were obviously after training but I can't find my trainers yeah I've got like some like, Air Max 98s or so, I don't know what they were maybe, or 97s maybe I'm looking for them someone's gone I oh, have a look in there but my man's looked over I'm looking at him he's looking at me then I looked at the bin that's where he was looking bro the trainers are in the bin my head's going yeah. my head's flying I'm like what the fuck like going mad in that and um, obviously picked them out no one snitched no one said you done it Yeah. and I realised like yo you have to kind of just learn how to be around different people. You don't always have to go mad. Like, yeah. some things are just banter. Like, they yeah. weren't dirty, nothing, yeah. can it? Yeah. And you do the same thing back or whatever, yeah. innit? So yeah. it just taught me some little lessons, innit, in football, like how to be around yeah. players and different personalities. Yeah, cool, man. And obviously, at your time at Palace, you went on four different loans, right? Four? Uh, yeah, I think. Crawley, Northampton, Plymouth. Uh, Bristol. Bristol, yeah. Rivers, cool. Yeah. We're going to get into those, though. We're going to get into the rest. But before that, though, I kind of want to talk a little bit so about, like, your first pro contract and how that kind of felt. Um, mm. Obviously, you got offered your scholarship early. 14, 13? Probably about 14. 14. Uh, and then I, I did too, by the way. Just, I, yeah, I safe. It. And then... Uh, um, when when was he offered your first pro deal? 
Um, I think maybe 16, we offered it like a few months before I turned 17. Okay. So like pre-agreed type thing. Yeah. And like, okay, so when you got the first one, I asked Tariq the same question. Like, how did how did it feel? Like, what was your mind state at that, that time? Mm, I don't know, man. I, I was earning the same money, innit? So, <laughs> nothing really changed. Like, I literally earned the same money up until the day. So it was just like, all right, it's good, innit? Like, I'm happy I've got it. Yeah. Like, it's a good moment, but we still have to... Nothing's changed, innit? Like, yeah. we're in the first team. Yeah. I need to still work to get in that change yeah. room. And... So would you say it made you hungrier? Like... Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Like, so I think a lot of people have the idea that it makes you just lay back and yeah. stuff. But I, I just said to myself, like, I, I didn't know how I needed to do it, but I just said, I need to play some games in this yeah. team. Did you, but did you feel like a pro? Because I feel like nowadays, yeah, with the kids, the 17-year-olds, if they've got a professional deal, they'll be putting on their Instagram bio professional footballer, but they've got yeah. no appearances. Did you actually feel like a professional footballer? Because, like, I, in my mind, I always felt... You know, you get some people that say, oh, you're not a professional player until you got over 100 league appearances or something like that. Yeah. I can't... I agree with that a little bit. Like, if you ain't got appearances, you're not really a professional. You might have a contract, but... Yeah. Did you feel like a, like a pro? It's a hard one, because I think... I did in some respect, but I still knew, like, I hadn't done enough to be talking. Right. Like, say, I've cracked it. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because if you've got a man who's played 300 games, 400, like, he he probably knows better than what you do, but it doesn't mean that you can't be better than him. Or that As a player. Yeah, 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 so yeah. You always have to be, like, quietly confident that yeah. you've got the ability. But, yeah, there's, a, that's, there's that, like, still in your show a little bit, like, okay, let me not really... Like B two forward of everything, core. Yeah, yeah. You, you still got to have respect for those kind of who are further along the line in their career. Than you. Yeah, cool. Mm-hmm. So, got your pro now. You still train. You still with the twenty? Was it twenty ones at the time? Yeah, but you training with the first team. Yeah, like I'm. I'm with the first team for some spells, like some. So you're kind of in and out. Bit of both, innit? it. So. Who was the manager that gave you the first FA Cup appearance? It was against Stoke. I remember. Yeah. I remember because people were talking about it against Stoke. Who, who was the manager at the time? Uh, Ian Holloway. Ian Holloway. Okay, yeah. cool. So what was that like leading up to that? Did, did you know he was going to start before that? They told me, I think, on the day in the hotel. Oh, they told you on the day of the Somewhat, game, yeah? Wait, was it on the day? I think it was on the day. I thought they were bantering. It's your professional debut. You don't even remember how it went. Do you know what was, Do you know what was? I know how it went, but I don't know if it was on the day or the day before, but I think it was on the day. And I just remember being... Someone, to, like, a player told me first. I was like, no, you're bantering, innit? Yeah. Because it was used to play around. Yeah. And then they said it in the meeting. I was like, what the hell? Like, I'm actually playing, innit? Yeah. It wasn't really expected, innit? And I think they might have told me on the day because they didn't want me to get too nervous, like, from the day before, innit? Mm. Um, and then, yeah, like, I can't lie, I was just mad excited, mm. mad excited. And then on the pitch, I just remember, like, I had, like, butterflies in it. And I felt like I was, you know the film Go? Yeah. I felt like I was in that, <laughs> I swear to God, I felt like I was in that, innit? It was at Stoke, right? Yeah, it was away, innit? Like, cold, you know Stoke were tough to play? Yeah, sometimes. yeah. And they played this, oh, I swear, Tony Peters played the strongest side, like, had everyone playing, innit? Yeah. Um, what were some of the names? Do you remember any of the names? I remember names? Crouch playing. Okay. Uh, like Jonathan Waters. I don't know if I don't know if Rory the like was about still them times. Yeah. But like, bro, it was a tough day. Maybe Kenwin Jones. Yeah. Bro. Um, and yeah, it was a good experience, man. Like, literally, I, I remember so many moments from the game. Yeah. That's probably something I won't ever really forget. And that was 2013. So what you was 17, 18? Just turned 17. Just turned 17. Mm. Okay. So, all right, cool. You've done that. How long How long until your next first year appearance after that? A year, bro. A year. A year. So, all right, so now I'm trying to think if I'm, I've made one appearance, FA Cup. Uh, I've done a right. I'm training with the first team, mm. in and out with the 21s, blah, blah, blah. A whole year to the next appearance. Like, mm-hmm. after the FA Cup game, did in your mind, was you kind of thinking, okay, 
I've made a first appearance now, like the balls, let's get the ball rolling type of thing. I should be involved, at least coming off the bench every now and then. Like, yeah. what was your expectations? Do you know what? I think we sat down and had a meeting <clears throat> and that's when I ended up going on loan to Crawley. Oh, in my okay. mind, I was thinking, I've done all right in the game, like, played, obviously, I think it was nil-nil while I was still on to about 65 minutes, 70 minutes, whatever. Um, and I was just thinking, oh, like, I want more in it. Like, I want more. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't think necessarily it had to be there. Like, it was okay for it to be alone, but I just wanted to play games. Play first in football, yeah. Um, so that was frustrating, obviously, waiting so long. But probably what was to a lot of people's detriment at the time at Palace, the club was, like, propelling at that point. Like, that's, yeah. That was the season club got promoted to the Premier League. Yeah, yeah. So they're in a, they're in a, a push for promotion. They ain't going to risk it about on you. Are thinking about being a yeah. 17-year-old? Maybe not. Probably not. Because yeah. uh, there wasn't anyone really doing it. So yeah. so, yeah, but obviously it's just one of those things, I guess. Yeah, cool. So you had to wait a year yeah. alone. But then you do make a Premier League debut against Swansea. Mm -hmm. How did that feel? Obviously, that's the big one. Like yeah. for me, I think that's bigger than coming on in the FA Cup. But like. do you know what's mad though? Because that from debut at seventeen, Premier League debut was at twenty. Okay. So I've won. I've played again. Played a game, another FA Cup game the year after. Then nothing the year after that, and then I've eventually. Okay. Or yeah, maybe it was like two years down the line from the debut, but um, yeah, that one was that one was mad as well. To be fair. I don't think I thought I was going to play either. I don't think I thought I was going to kind of get a chance. I'd been on the, I'd been in the squad or on the bench yeah. a couple of times around that. Um, and then I think Johan Kabai had a tight hamstring. So they just said, yeah, like, get ready. You're going to come on. I'm like, what me? Because Sile was next to me. I said, what okay. me? So he said, he said um, yeah, you're coming on. Came on. And... Um, yeah, I thought I gave a decent account of myself, like, hit the post. Mm. Who was the manager at that time? Uh, Alan Pardew. Okay. I hit the post and I remember thinking, oh my God, if that got If you scored. Your days are the paper tomorrow. Bro, the team had won for like 10 games or something like that. I said, oh, this, this would have been me, man. <laughs> but anyway, that's how, that's how it goes. Sometimes. So, all right, cool. So you had to wait mad long for that opportunity what so you you finally kind of made a Premier League appearance that's kind of every kid's dream yeah to play in a Prem um you've done that now did you think what at what stage in the season was that was that early doors was it like uh it was in February okay so almost coming to the back end of the season did you think all right then I've I've come in now I should maybe get another at least coming off the bench a few more times kind of thing yeah so to be honest this time here, I thought, this time here, I actually thought, okay, I'm going to be around it now. Yeah. Before you're know, out alone again. But where'd you go alone this time? Plymouth. That was a Plymouth. So alone. I went Plymouth, started the season, got injured, made my Premier debut, then went back to Plymouth in okay. like March. The windows were different them time. Yeah. So was, so what, was you disappointed? Was you happy to go to Plymouth because you won the first team football? Like, what was, was, what was you thinking? I was pissed because I wanted to, <laughs> I'll be real, I was pissed because I I wanted to, like, that's the club I was at, innit? Yeah. That's my parent club. I want to, the play. whole aim of these loans is to go back and play. And play, yeah. So I was frustrated and didn't really understand why I wasn't, like, able to stay around it and be yeah. in the squad. You know, you've already brought me on now. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I went, to, went back to Plymouth and obviously got some more games and ended up having a run, went to the playoff final and got to play at Wembley and stuff, which yeah. is something that a lot of people probably dream of doing. Yeah. So I you guess see. there was there was like a good thing that came out of it still. Although we lost, there was a there was something that came out of it. Um so yeah man, it was just You still did a lot of big things though. Yeah. So kind of <clears throat> you mentioned about Palace getting promoted. Uh, a lot of people was kind of like when you, when I talk to people about that period, it was like the the first team outgrew the club, 
in mm-hmm. a sense, like the infrastructure, because you know, at the time training ground was dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Done. Like everything wasn't really that good. But the club have just got promoted. They're a Premier League club. Mm-hmm. But the club itself was a little bit still championship kind yeah. of the way it was running stuff. <clears throat> but then obviously with that came a mad influx of players. Like, how much would you say that affected not just you, but all the other guys our age at that time mm-hmm. going like 18, 19? And, all, and then obviously we got promoted kind of how, mm-hmm. how how would you say in your own words that it affected kind of the youth team and the youth players chances yeah um I think well I'm sure you probably have a similar perspective on it but it was just a madness in it like there was there was that it was clear that you were going to struggle to come through at the club in that time yeah because like a transition period so that like things were being trialed and tested, you know. Pe- I think there was 13 new 13 signings. 13 new in signings, innit? I was just going to say that. I was yeah. going to say 15, but yeah. There were, there were so many people that left in the same season, in the January, like people that didn't kick a ball yeah. with the first team. So all of these spots were kind of being filled by players who, everyone's, uh, everyone's due a chance and stuff, but players who, were never really brought into play or yeah. maybe they didn't know enough about yeah. that could have been youngsters that are getting the chance. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like now, nowadays there's maybe a time where they're clearing out and Yeah, they can, can actually that. look at the youngsters now, yeah. So it's just never been at the forefront of, I feel like it's never really been at the forefront of people's mind. And also maybe it's down to uh, us, young, us young ones at the time as players to have stepped up and obviously shown more, you know, uh, been more willing to take more risks and stuff like that. But opportunities are few and far between, isn't it? Yeah. And you feel like with the influx of players, obviously you've got the 21 squad, but some of these guys are dropping down to play 21s too. Yeah. And the 21s, yeah. t- 21s football is kind of where you're trying to show, right, I'm good enough to be with you guys in the first team. Mm. But I always found that like when people drop down, some of them are big time. They don't want to be there. They're kind of messing up the harmony with the young ones who are on it and they're trying to get a bit higher. Mm-hmm. Did that affect did that ever affect you like personally? Like, like was you ever like pissed at any of the any of the players or like even affect your football or like, anything like that? Do you know what? I think at the time, I don't know why, but it's like I could I wasn't looking ahead, but I just thought sometimes, okay, if a player's coming down to play with the 23s or train with the 23s and clearly there's a clearly doesn't want to be there there's a reason maybe he's got an issue with the manager maybe the manager didn't sign him whatever and he's disrupting the session certain players were getting vexed they were pissed off at whoever it may be at the time but for me I saw it as you don't know what's going on with that player in it mm, you don't know what true. situation they're in and what they're going through and how he's being treated by a club. Yeah. So I just kind of like get on. I would just go, get on with what I'm doing. Yeah. Try and train properly and whatever they're doing, they're yeah. doing in it. Just focus on yourself. Um, yeah. So that was kind of how I I looked at it. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's good, man. I think sometimes in football, it's a team game, but you need to have that little bit of that selfishness. Yeah. True. No one, sometimes, you know, you you've got to care for yourself more than anybody else like they mm-hmm. and i think that <clears throat> some people get wrapped up in this team 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 but boy if you if you ain't getting a contract next season <laughs> they're not paying your rent or whatever it's so it's whatever um so i kind of want to talk a little bit about kind of your motivation and how you've managed to just keep going especially in football it's so easy to see people drop out and you see people not getting contracts, so on and so forth. So when, when, how, how have you kind of stayed motivated and how has, how have, how has seeing like pe- other people maybe have to drop, have to drop down leagues or maybe stop playing or they just pack it in because they can't keep going on all these trials or whatever. Yeah. How is, how does that impact you um, in terms of your motivation? Does it kind of, does it impact you at all? Do you not care? Because I, I always think for me, obviously I dropped out to a degree. I didn't get a pro, blah, blah, blah. And to me, 
when I see all these other people dropping out, I was always as a, when I was younger, I was thinking I'm always going to play because mm-hmm. it just made me want to play even more because yeah. I'm thinking uh, that I need to show that I'm built. I'm built for this kind of thing. That was my mind state. So that's kind of still, even though I'm not, I don't really care about going pro now, I still kind of think like that mm-hmm. now, even playing semi-pro, I'm like, even no matter how I've gone through these injuries, I'm going to keep going, man. Just I just want to play. I'm just going to go until yeah. my body says no. Like, mm-hmm. like how has, how has, yeah, so how has that affected you and your motivation and keeping you on top of your game, like seeing other people and maybe things are not going well for others? Mm. Um, do you know what? Yeah, I can't lie. I just, let's try to cut through and do me and not really worry about what everyone's doing. I have close friends and stuff who, Obviously, I take more interest in their career and stuff. But other than that, man, like I try and just almost like tunnel vision. Mm. Because when you're looking too much at what everyone's doing, you get distracted in it. And it makes you start maybe thinking, oh, okay, this guy, this guy, this guy's all dropped out. You know, it's easy. Let me just do, let me just do the same thing, or let me just, it's whatever in it. There's another option for me. But I and I, I kind of I want this to be my my thing, like where I can leave a legacy in football and say, do you know what I've done this? I've achieved this in my career. Like I think I was speaking to someone the other day about like leaving the game and not have achieved certain landmarks or certain things that I wanted to, and it would just frustrate me. And I don't want to kind of have those regrets yeah. like, after yeah. after my career, man. Yeah, especially when you put thirty. 30 years into it from eight or eight years old or whatever. It's a long, it's a long time. You almost don't need, like what you're saying, you almost don't need motivating. Like, yeah, you put too much time in to, to yeah, not be motivated already. This is your thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's true. So that's that's kind of how I how I look at it. And it's just like, there's so much out there to, to gain from football. Yeah. Like, you're trading off your time, you're trading off your energy and stuff like that, but... It's worth it in the in the long run. Yeah. In, in the bigger picture, because I have had my days where I'm like, I don't want to go in. Like I actually have certain like, obviously you know my my certain situations I've been in, um, with football. But I've had days where I've woke up and I thought, no, I actually don't want to go in today. Or days where I'm in the session and I feel like I just want to walk off the pitch. Yeah. And if people are calling me, just carry on walking. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. But like, you literally just have to have thick skin to be able to deal with situations and know that there's always going to be someone else who's going to be having you and there's always kind of going to be light at the yeah. end of it and just kind of get on with it innit? it yeah because so. it's because obviously football's i feel like sometimes people who don't play <clears throat> they don't realize how political it can be yeah it's like game of thrones sometimes but <laughs> like it's actually with some of the stories and sometimes i feel like not going pro was good for me because some of the mm. stories I feel like mentally, I don't know, like I feel like I would probably lose my mind yeah. some the way some players get treated. Um, but I kind of want to go back to Palace a little bit mm. and kind of your, like, inside, I, and I spoke about it on my episode of T about, like, me never making it and him having to retire, like, mm. that little bit where... Right, that being a footballer I was so tied to my identity. Um, I felt like a little bit where maybe part of me kind of died a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I still feel like now, me, I'll never fully accept it. I've said it about three times. I'll never fully accept it, but it's cool. Like I'm over it, but I'll never accept it. Yeah, yeah. So obviously you're still a pro right now. But I mean, in terms of not like you never really cracked it at Palace, you you were there. How many years? From eight years old to 20 what? 13 years or something. 13 years. And you never really like, unfortunately, didn't become the main centre midfielder, homegrown centre midfielder that you probably should have and could have been. Mm. Like, does that ever eat away at you? Like, at at some points, like, do you ever think about it? Like, rah. Do you know what? (sighs) It doesn't. And maybe because I'm playing still. Mm. It doesn't. And I know, obviously, I can always be proud of the fact that I managed to play, make some appearances. Well, you know how hard it was, like, at that club, innit? Mm. So you almost, from for me personally, I felt like you're fighting against people. You're fighting against staff that don't want you to do extras. You're fighting against people who are telling you you're not kind of, you're not good enough and stuff. So 
I don't think you're built to. I don't think it's a, the, it was the environment to succeed. Right. Do you know what I mean? So I I don't re, I don't really like it doesn't eat away at me because I feel like so many people could have been in that same position and were in that same position. Yeah, lots of people. And yeah. who came out of it? Yeah. One player, two players, maybe our era or below. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's more probably I sometimes look at decisions I've made as I've progressed through my career and was this place the right choice? Or like after, place? like after Palace. Yeah, that's okay. more the thing I think about more. Yeah. And maybe gets brought up in conversation. Um, so yeah, it's, it's important to kind of know you're making the right decision and, you know, what might be the best option for you at each time and stage of your career. Yeah. So with that then, we'll go back to the loans now. Mm-hmm. So at Palace, you went on four loans, yeah? Yeah. Cruelly, that was that one was dead. Plymouth, you made it to uh playoff final. Mm, mm. How was so obviously you must have had a good change room. How was how were, how was Plymouth like as an experience? Yeah, Plymouth was sick, you know. Um obviously T spoke about how he was there as well. And although it wasn't the same group, it weren't fully the same group of players, it was the same kind of environment and ethos like you had like everyone's there in it. Everyone like, has to move there and live there permanently, oh, okay, like yeah. so far away from everything. Yeah. So you can like link up with other players off the football. You have like a little coffee club everyone used to go to in town and just chill. I think I was drinking hot chocolates them days, but <laughs> but um yeah, it was just good, man. It was a good group in it, and you know probably should have we probably should have got the promotion when I look at it, uh, when I look back at it, but um. Obviously, football man. Yeah, unpredictable. So after the Plymouth loan, you go back to Palace again. Yeah, went back there. Did preseason with Palace, mm-hmm. and then you went to where'd you go after that? Bristol or Northampton? I went to Bristol Rovers first. Bristol Rovers. Yeah. Cool. So you done preseason with Palace. Was at that point was you thinking, um, like maybe I maybe I'll get a chance to stick around with Palace. Beating and around the first team, or did you know already? Like I'm, I'm going. Um, hmm. I'm not sure, you know. No, I did. No, I did preseason. I did preseason with the first team. I think, and then I think they were trying. I think they were trying to work something to try and sell me. Okay. Somewhere. Yeah. So Bristol Rovers were interested. But then it was like maybe a loan with a view to a permanent to buy, yeah. sort of thing, innit? Um, so yeah, that was obviously a different situation to be in because now you know that like you might be on your way out of the door and mm. stuff like that, especially with the the manager at the time. Like, yeah. So it was a different one. I think that's where I kind of like said, you know, what? I need to go step up this yeah. season and prove to people, not just proving to get in their team, but proving that okay, you're making the right. You're making the wrong decision, yeah, or prove that I'm kind of worth more than yeah what people think and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so how was the Bristol Rovers experience? Strange. Why strange? Tease to talk to you about Bristol Rovers, isn't it? <laughs> strange, man. It was, str- it was just a strange experience. I've gone there. I think I've played probably in half a season. Played about twelve games. Um. Funnily enough, there was a story of when I've had a game against Sheffield United, uh, obviously when they were in League One. And um, I think I come off at about 60th minute. It was no, no. Someone got sent off for us. And then they scored after that, like five minutes later. So it was like game basically dead and buried, didn't it? Um, and then. I heard something about the manager saying to my agent, oh, when they took him off, I was buzzing. Because he's running us ragged. I was like, oh my days. It's just, this is, this is football for yeah. me. Like, That's what the Sheffield United manager said. See, this is what I've heard. Okay. So obviously you can't necessarily quote because I wasn't in the room. Yeah, but yeah. I, for me personally, I knew I was having a good game. Right, because I but, feel like you know, isn't it? everyone knows you when know, you're... You know when you're playing well. You know when you're playing well, yeah. And I said, Sata's not right here, man. But yeah. that kind of like sums up my experience there because yeah. I feel like I'd play well, then I'd be on the bench next week, then I'd be in the stands the week after. 
then I might start the week after that. Right, so just so it was just, inconsistent. So it, was, it was just changing a lot and, you know, obviously that's how the manager wanted to operate. Yeah. And obviously it gave him some success at that club. So, yeah. you know, you can't knock how people want to operate, but sometimes it doesn't work for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when with all that chopping and changing, mm. I don't know, when I think about when I was a kid, if I weren't playing, I'd just be... I, I'm one of them guys on the bench. I'm like, I hope we lose. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. If I'm not playing, I genuinely do not care what's happening on the pitch. Mm. Call it a shit attitude, shit attitude. I don't care. But like, what was your mind state kind of where you're not playing? Was you, was it a thing where was you like staying behind doing extras, extra gym work? Or was it just like, you're just going to keep training, doing what everyone else is doing until, and then when you're on the pitch, you're going to just try and do what you need to do. To be fair, um, I think they wanted to see, like, I don't know how else to explain it, but like, you know when they put a rocket up your ass? Yeah, they wanted, yeah. They wanted that from me. Yeah. And I gave that reaction when, like, I was maybe left out or, and I think that's probably what kind of spiraled me to, to, I might be in the, on, in the stand one week and then play the next week. That probably is what led to those kind of things taking place, but you get to a point where, I think at that age as well, I think I was about 20, and things used to get me down a bit more than now. Mm. Like now I know how to deal with things, and like you need to always have in your head, okay, you're the person that's gonna be affected by your choices right. and your decisions. But those times then, you my head's gone, my head's gone. Yeah, it is what it is. I don't is. wanna be around the place, like I'll go home, I don't wanna chat to no one. Like that was the vibe I was on those times and probably didn't help me. But like, I think, see, as I've got older and understood like, you're not that player that's on loan from Palace. You're not a pre- like a player, a young player at a prem, prem club coming on loan. Yeah. I, I am what I am, innit? I'm, I'm me as a player. I need to just take accountability and, and yeah. you know, get, get yourself right, even if you're not playing. So. Yeah, that makes sense. So then, so did you do a full season on loan at Bristol or only half a season? No, half a season. And then you gone back to Palace again? Uh, I went to Northampton after Oh, so you gone straight to Northampton from there? Yeah, I came back to two day- I came back for two days and then obviously went. How so how was it at Northampton? The manager that signed me got sacked in the same week. <laughs> Bro, you couldn't write it, honestly. You couldn't write it. He got sacked in the same week and then and then um, it started well. It started well. I think I got like, I was playing playing decent, obviously settling into the team. And then I had a spell where I got like three man of the matches and three games, like home games. And like I was enjoying my football and stuff. And then randomly I got dropped. Got dropped. He said, oh, like, the manager said he's going to take me out and then bring me back in. And then from that point, it was just very like, um, very like in and out at that from that point. Mm. So, yes, yeah, the loan system is just difficult, man. Yeah, so you that's what that's gonna what I was going to ask you about. Like, was it ever like frustrating to just keep kind of being sent all over the place? Because another thing as well is your life. Yeah, you kind of got to just move houses. Obviously, they might look after you housewise and that, but mm-hmm. you don't get to settle in anywhere because you've got to keep moving around. Like, yeah, was a loan. Was the loan thing ever get to the point where you're just like, I can't be, I can't be bothered with this anymore. I just uh, want to find one team and just stay there. I think that's probably why I left at the point I left. Because um, I was still contracted when I left. I left a year before the end of my contract. Oh, at Palace? Yeah, so that was part of it. I think wanting to be settled. I didn't mind it so much. Like, so you're living in different parts of the country and uh, you do get to experience all those things, like living in different places and obviously a bit of freedom as well, like and learning how to just mature up and learn how to cook, all of these things, innit? It wasn't too bad, but like you do get to a point where you just want to be, you want to kind of like be in one place and just yeah. be able to concentrate on your football. You're not trying to get back to, you're not trying to get back home every every weekend and stuff, so. So yeah, that was a, that was a part of it, I'd say. Yeah, but do you think that? So overall, would you say like the loans, the loans was a good thing for you, like for your career? 
I think so because if I left without if I left without that experience, probably wouldn't have had a league club. Right. Because yeah, you know, footballers, you need to have those appearances under yeah, your belt. Yeah. Otherwise, you might you might crack it another way, not crack it, but you might get an opportunity another way if you leave and then you might go to another twenty threes to yeah. even get in the first team. But I think this at least steadies your, your career and allows you to 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 find a club in the league and you know kick on from there. Yeah. So and and I think that it's good you say that because I think that sometimes with the kids they get comfortable being in the twenty threes mm. or the eighteens and they don't realize that really they the, that managers don't really care what you're no, doing at that really. level. <laughs> like, they, they don't care. Every manager like I, I speak to about it. They don't care. They just say, "Oh, it's just rubbish." Even non like even non league managers don't care. Yeah, like they don't care. You could you could have thirty goals in the twenty threes. They really don't care. But some clubs don't have the structure of sending players out on loan. Like, right. Like, even like going back to Palace, a lot of the players there are kind of see. You know, my brother's there still, and even from probably when I left, they kind of changed their thing a little bit. Like when Frank de Boer become the manager, he said he doesn't want any of the young ones going on loan. Okay. People seem to be around the first team. That's yeah. how they're going to de- develop them. Yeah. Um, I hadn't heard that before, but if a club's got that structure, but then the player gets released... It the leaves him high and dry, yeah. What position is he in at that yeah, point? That's you true. Know, if you're bringing through loads of loads of players... Then it works, yeah. If you're not... And he's come from Ajax set up. Yeah, it's yeah, different. So, yeah. What do you think of the thing, uh, loan system? Do I you, think... you like it or not? I think if you're, like... A promising youngster and the club's loving you and you're with the first team all the time then maybe it's worth staying because if someone gets injured or at least if you're touching bench every now and then then it's worth it but I yeah. think if you're someone who you know you're with the 23s you ain't getting in the first team you might train with the first team every now and then mm-hmm. I think you should go on loan man because if you can go somewhere league two or league one and you can get games then you're only gonna help yourself because if you get released especially if you're at a Premier League club but yeah. you've got appearances. At least you know, cool. I've I've played games. People have seen me, and players don't. I feel like sometimes players don't realize, but it's net it's networking as well because yeah, you yeah, get yeah. to meet other managers. Like people get to know you, sure. um, and a lot of people are get woken up because they don't realize that men's football is different. No, it is. Even though I ain't played League One, League Two, I can just see. When I watch 23s and I watch League One or League Two, I'm like, okay, these kids can't play in this because it's different mm. and it's not the same kind of football. So yeah, I think it's good. I think it's good to go and learn because you get to get to grow up a bit. I Develop think. your game yeah, as well, isn't it? For sure. Cool, man. So, what are some of the pros and cons of being a professional footballer? Like, everyone thinks. I feel like from the outside in, people think money, train, go home, do whatever I want. Da da da. Yeah, but the reality is it's not always like that. It's not, it's, it's not always like that at all. So what, start with the cons. I always want to, we'll finish on the positives. What are the worst things about being a pro? Um, probably now, like when you get older, moving about a lot okay. and you can't, it's so hard to settle. Um, you end up anywhere. Yeah. Uh, maybe a break once, one time in the year. <laughs> <laughs> that one there's a that one there's a because you only get one break really, yeah. isn't it? It's like the the summer and that's yeah. it. You get was it May end of May, May and like June, May and and part of June. But like even when you're off, now you have to train in it. Like yeah, you like, still got a... day, people will probably just like. Off and really off. off. And really off. Yeah, like yeah. Now you can't even do that. Like, yeah. like two weeks. And you still got, you, then... you got to be doing something in the gym or something, right? Yeah. Uh, another thing, probably you miss so many like things, like events in okay. terms of like like lifestyle. Yeah, like lifestyle. And I, when I say events, I mean like, like a, a wedding. You might not be able to go to because yeah. you have a game on the day, but it might be someone really close to you. Yeah. Like. You have to play the match. But yeah, you can't even do it's that. In, yeah. It's other things in life that are also important as well. Yeah. So those are probably the three things. There's not that much that that's bad about playing it, yeah. but shit you know, managers. Roof, shit yeah, managers. Yeah, well, thinking, yeah, those are just typical things. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
yeah, like obviously bad management and you know people not knowing how to deal with players because I've had some really good managers, but yeah. I've had some managers I haven't got on with as well. Yeah. Um, but not everybody's for everyone, in it. Yeah. It's just part it's of a life. personality thing, in it. It is honestly. Some people don't like me because, or some people might not like me because they think I, I don't know, like my. My facial expression sometimes when they see me or right, like body or, language. Or, or I might walk slow or something like that. They don't like that. But then if you get to know me and you speak to me, have conversations with yeah. me, you realise how I am, like I'm respectful, I'm nice to people. That's a dumb but, thing with football sometimes, is oh, that I've heard I've heard it all. Before you even get to know someone, like they judge you before you've actually done anything. Yeah. It I've is heard, a it is a bit weird, the I've culture. Heard it all. Okay, cool. So that's the that's the cons. We'll mm-hmm. Always end them in positive. Yeah. What are some of the pros? Um, get to do what you love. Yeah, that's of course that's a big. Get to do what you love. Um, you get to help your your family financially from an age that maybe people wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah. From. Um, This isn't a big one for me, maybe, but like people love you like for no reason, kind of like yeah, just like the fans, yeah. yeah. Like so, I, I, I probably like sometimes like, I'll probably appreciate someone who's they might message me like, and I'll just be going for a message and say, oh, like appreciate mess, appreciate your message so much because like literally I'm not doing anything special, but like me replying to you is making your day. Like mm. it's kind of a big thing, isn't it? Yeah. I think. Um, and other pros, I don't know, man. It's not a lot of pros, you know. People, I would be expecting a bit more. Bro, I don't know. Like, there's so much to gain in it. Like, it depends what level you play at. Yeah. As well. Okay. Because do you mean like financially? Financially, or... uh, a sense of fulfillment. Do you know what I mean? It's like, like you can pl- like you can play on a big stage. You can play. Wembley, you could play in a Champions League final. Like, there's so many things that you can achieve mm. in the game. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. you're always going to be able to look back on those things and say, oh, I did this or I did that. Mm. Um, yeah, you get to and travel all over the place. Look how much places we've been to just, yeah, from, just, just at the back of football. Yeah, it's true. So, yeah, man, there are, there are loads yeah. of... It's taken me to so many different countries and yeah. areas and... Whatever. So. When, and when I think about the places I've been because of football, I would have never probably How been you, there. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you remember when we went on tour um, to Lucerne in like Switzerland or Switzerland, something? yeah, yeah. That was a good one as well. Do you know what I mean? Like, we, went it, we went Italy. Italy. Did you, did, we, did you go on the one when we went to Amsterdam? Uh, not Amsterdam, we went to Holland. We went somewhere in Holland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like we've been... I mean, we went to France. That we did... was mad for me though. I missed the pen. <laughs> <laughs> I missed the pen in the final. We went to France as well. The night cut, night cut was good, even though yeah. it's in England, but still that was good. Yeah. No, it's yeah. true, man. You yeah, do a lot places, of things. Man. We've been all over the place. So it's... And yeah, and actually, so like probably should have started with this, but mm-hmm. kind of growing up in Battersea. Yeah. Like obviously, South London, there's mm-hmm. bare distractions. How how did you like navigate through that? Because it's so easy to get caught up in certain things. How how was kind of how did you find, did you ever feel pressured to, obviously yeah. not, not pressured, but like, did you ever feel, did you, obviously you might have friends that were roped into certain lifestyles, blah, blah, blah. How did you kind of just navigate your way through that? Do you know what, yeah, I think, a big part is probably like, family just trying to keep me on the right path, like, obviously they can do it to an extent, there's a point where the, it's your decision, isn't it? Yeah. But like, just, I don't know, like, people will be kicking ball outside and I would, but then if it's, like, a big group, a lot of people, like, a lot of big people, my dad will be like, nah, you're not playing with them anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, just, like, even I'm seeing people around me who might have been in a similar situation. Like there was a guy who was at Palace a few years older and he lived in the same area, innit? And I think... I was like, he was being like naughty in school and stuff like that. And Palace ended up releasing it. Oh, I said to myself, okay. listen, I'm not trying to be that guy. Yeah, like, yeah, of course. I actually love going to play football. Yeah. Like, 
I love be, being able to do what I want to do and, yeah. you know, and I just said to myself, you know, I have to be a certain way. And then another thing that probably helped that was when I touched, just before, just before I touched 16, uh, my dad moved us out of the area. Okay. So he moved us out from Battersea to Kent. And that was another another thing that probably helped because yeah. I'll come around the nice house, I'm around you, man. Yeah, in Kent. Instead of, nothing happening in Kent. <laughs> instead of obviously in Battersea and, you know, I think that was probably a big, um, a, that was not even probably, that was a massive factor yeah. into me just being able to stay on like, the right path and stay focused on yeah. things. Yeah, mm-hmm. That helped you concentrate more. Like. 100 percent Bro, with them times there, it's like you're a teenager. Yeah, 16 is going on, yeah, 16 is a big age as well. Like man's partying as well, like hitting I mean? the parties and that. So yeah, like I, at that point there, I think, yeah, it just allowed me to focus on football. Like it was football, school, yeah, home. That's yeah, it, really. That's it. Cool, man. So before we wrap up, couple last bits. Obviously, I'm a health and fitness coach, football, big mm-hmm. part of training gym, all that stuff. Um, now everyone knows in football, for, for me, the worst time is preseason. I hate it. Pete. Um, you've done a lot of preseasons now. Can you think back to some of your some of the worst preseasons that you've had mm-hmm. in terms of what you've had to do, running, gym or whatever? Mm. Uh, yeah, one sticks out like a sore farm, Tony Pulis. <laughs> I knew he was going to say that as well, you know. <sighs> This run, oh my God, we went to Austria, yeah. Yeah. Firstly, they're all saying, oh, it's high altitude, that's why we're going Austria, there. Austria, yeah, yeah. Mountains so we're there, there, a hotel in the mountains. Everything's nice, like, the food's nice. You know, it's, I'm thinking, yeah, this place is decent. Bro. Every single day, we were there for like, we were there for like maybe a week. Might be a little bit more. Every single day, you're either doing a bike session, like you, we had like road bikes, or you're doing a run. Did this run. So they drove us up to the mountain, 6 a.m. 6 a.m.? 6 a.m., no breakfast. All we've had is like a cereal bar or something. Because he wanted to run before it gets too hot, in it. Ah, uh, okay. Um, and you run from the bottom of the mountain to like top of it and bottom to top four times. And when you get to the top, a minibus drives you back down to the bottom. Oh, you don't even get to walk back or like oh, little jog back. back. Quick, <laughs> vomiting, holding on to the minibus, vomiting. Um, then there's four checkpoints. So you do that four times, then you go up a little bit higher and then it's four times and then so on and so forth. Bro, I'm running. Got Damien Delaney behind me screaming out. I'm going to I'm gonna two foot you. I'm going to two foot you. I'm like, boy, I'm not built for this, man. Yeah. Shouting at man. I'm like, bro, what are you shouting at? Like, yeah. <laughs> what are you shouting for? I'm fucked. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Toasted. And yeah, that, that preseason is just all, it's just a blur, man. Honestly. Yeah. That was the hardest. That was the hardest one, yeah. Was done, yeah. That's mad. That sounds so horrible. I can survive anything now. After. Yeah, yeah. You put yourself through that, mm-hmm. the mountain stuff. Cool. So like, in season now, what are, what are some of the stuff that you have to do in terms of, like I know every every manager does things differently, but after preseason, usually you, if you're playing, you don't have to do as much like running. Right now, well, you was at Cambridge last season. Yeah. Did you do? Did you have to do much running in season? Yeah. Did you run at all? Um, not really. If you don't, if you're not playing, then yeah. But so like when I was injured, obviously, yeah, I had to run. But yeah. if you're playing regular. Not really. At MK, there is a bit like they do top ups. Okay. You're like, it's like you got to get to basically the end of the pitch and back in like 35 seconds. Yeah. And then you might do like a set of three or two sets of three. And that's quite a blow. But yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, that's long. Just depends on the, the club. Yeah. Every, every club's kind of different. And then what about the gym work? How many times on a typical week, mm. how many times are you in the gym and how many, and what kind of things are you guys doing in the gym? Obviously, again, every club is different, yeah. but typically. Typically, about two times, two times a week. Yeah. Maybe three, but it depends on how the week is. If you've got a Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesdays, mm. then it might even be one. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it just depends on the load and how everyone's feeling. But 
uh, and then depending on club, like it's it's all structured differently at different clubs. Um, obviously, I feel like at times you need to have a bit of your own kind of conditioning or your own program program to, yeah. to follow to probably heighten your potential as well because everything is quite generic. If you're doing it with the team, places, right? Yeah, yeah. some places. It's quite generic. Because it's a program for everybody. Mm-hmm. So I think it's important to obviously know what you need yeah. for yourself. Yeah. And you can take that everywhere with you and yeah. progress it as you... As and did they, did they... And obviously, like, like I said, again, some clubs are different, but did they... Obviously, you do testing pre-season, right? Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of the gym side of things, whether it's like your power, or your, your maximal strength or whatever, mm-hmm. did they tell you like where... You might have weaknesses or um what you need I to think, work on. I think they, they a lot of it is down to maybe if you've had like if you've had injuries in a certain position, they might work you more on that sort right. of thing. So like for they you, might, like maybe your shoulder or whatever. Yeah, they might make it more specific to that if you've had maybe injuries. But then in terms of the gym work, a lot of the time, okay, so goalkeepers might be doing different to outfield or yeah. strikers might be a little bit different to midfielders depending on how your build is and stuff so it's all kind of like it can it can be tailored to you a bit more but i think the things that are tailored more are like injury based right okay things. it's not performance based no nah, yeah not, okay not as much yeah you know and then they will just tailor the weights to what you've done to what you testing. can do yeah mm-hmm. cool that makes sense all right man cool so before we wrap up one more thing obviously football is a mad short career in the, in the hindsight of things like long term yeah. quite a short career so I always like to kind of know what kind of things what are some of your major interests outside of football yeah. like, and obviously you're still young 25 you've got at least another 10 more years in this game but um, Brilliant, bro. <laughs> but obviously that day is going to come mm-hmm. you don't wanna, I don't want to wish it on you too early but mm. what are some of your like what could you see yourself doing when it's all over like yeah. What are some of your things outside of football? Bro, it changes every day, honestly. <laughs> but um yeah, I've I've started taking interest in a few things. Um obviously I'm trying to get a better understanding of like property market and what kind of strategy I want to do. And yeah, just obviously I'm working on that and mirroring someone to just really, really grasp like how to do it and yeah. if it if it suits me in that way do I need to maybe outsource or not how, how much time do I have because at the end of the day is I think you can do you can do it alongside football but then it's can I do it alongside football right does it suit me to do it do I wait until a bit later to go really deep into it uh, but yeah that's one thing I'm kind of doing and just learning learning how to Learn how to invest better because I think I've not been someone who's had a financial advisor over my career and I've always been skeptical, but now it's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I realize a lot of information is out there. Like, can I be different to other people and, yeah. and go and learn myself? You yeah, know? Why, why not? If why it's not? out there, yeah. then why not just learn? And, and see? it's always better to be proactive than reactive, man. Yeah. I always say that. hundred percent. And especially, to the young, to the young footballers, I always say like, "Cool, man, you you love football." And we're told from when you're in the academy, they they say, "Okay, look, maybe only one or two of you at this group is actually going to go pro." But you don't think that I'm not I'm not going to be the one. You're going to think I'm going to be the one or two. Mm-hmm. So I always say it's important to kind of have some interest outside of football, man. Because yeah. life isn't just football. It might feel like it's just football at the time, but it's not. When it's over, it's over, and Boy, it's true. You don't know what's coming next. Mm-hmm. So, cool, man. And then, if you could give yourself, your younger self, one piece of advice, what would it be? You got to think about this one, isn't it? Yeah. I want to say. I want to say, outwork everyone. Mm. Work ethic not just on the pitch, but just go into more detail than everyone. 
whether it be, I know clips and stuff weren't really that a big thing back then. We couldn't really get all the yeah. clips and stuff, but whether it be analysing a game, whether it be, all right, I'm going to now try and work with a, a coach or get more work from one of my own coaches. Yeah. Like, be proactive with that rather than waiting for them to say, oh, you need to work on this. Hey, you're coming. You're, we're doing a bit tomorrow, like, or we're doing a bit in the morning. That needed to be me probably on the front foot all the time, not just in spells. Yeah, like it's just a constant part mm-hmm. of your... Because yeah. that's how you that's how you improve. Yeah, it's true. That's, that's how you improve. So that's probably one thing I would say. It's true. Myself. And I don't know who was saying it. I think it was even Tariq saying it about one player that he played with and he was good, but he was just mad quick. Mm-hmm. And he asked him, like, how, how are you so quick? And the guy was like, I work with a, a running coach yeah. outside of football. Mm-hmm. I don't know who it was, but he was telling me about it. Who was it, T? Callum O'Donnell. There you go. Oh, yeah, he mentioned, yeah. yeah. When was we having that conversation? I can't remember. Yeah, I that but I remember you saying know. it the other day. It was like two weeks ago. Yeah, it was yeah, quite yeah, recent. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's big though, isn't it? It's yeah, actually, no, it's important, yeah. And it even ties into kind of like you training people as well in terms of like people see improvements. Yeah. It's not like, it's not magic, in it? Yeah, If you true. put the work in, it's gonna you're going to see improvements in whatever it is you're doing. Yeah. So that is what I would say because you know how maybe I was younger or how I've been I'm quite like laid back relaxed but I think I've grasped it now I've got, as I've got older and I understand it more but I think if I could tell myself that then and just like hone in on that then yeah. it would have been be it, it would be a good piece of advice yeah cool man alright well thank you it's a really good good Pleasure, conversation bro. I'm glad you joined me we're going to do it again one day Definitely. When I've got like 50, 100 episodes to get you back <laughs> down there. Um, but yeah, man, I appreciate it. Um, I'll leave your social media in the description. Guys, make sure you like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, that's it. The Spectrum of Health podcast. I'm over and out. It's Jav. I was with Hira and Botang. Peace. Yes, bro. <laughs>